Time and the Narcissist, Part 1. I am often asked about the effects of the advancement of time on our kind. What about the advancement of time and ageing impacting on our kind generally? The standard question that is asked is whether a narcissist will get better or worse with age, as you might expect. It is not as straightforward as that, as it will depend on the cadre of the narcissist and the relevant school from which him or her hails. Let us begin with the victim cadre. All of our kind see ourselves as victims, and we will make use of emotional blackmail, pity plays and drives for sympathy as part of the narcissistic arsenal to further our aims. But one cadre of narcissists takes it to an extreme and relies on sympathy, pity, and being cared for more often and more intensely. And this person amounts to being a victim narcissist. The lesser victim. A victim narcissist, which hails from the lesser school of narcissism, is one whereby age will give him more to complain about, more to point to, and more to seek sympathy for. Used to already drawing his fuel primarily through the application of concern, sympathy and caring, he can look forward to getting more of this as time advances. As his illnesses become worse, his flesh weakens, and his conditions become all the more debilitating, he will rely heavily on gaining his fuel from his primary source, who is likely to be his primary carer. Lacking the ability to seek fuel from fraternising with new sources, the lesser victim narcissist will look to have his fuel levels maintained by the primary source and a small group of family and friends. He will be something of a curmudgeon, always complaining about his aches and pains in order to draw that fuel and will be seen as a burden. Lacking control, since he is a lesser, he will often erupt when he feels he is not being cared for and his physical pains become too great for him. He will have chosen most likely a carrier empath to shoulder this burden. But if the primary source should ever escape, although this is less likely as the primary source will have been selected for his or her quality, caring and domestic attributes, the lesser victim narcissist is likely to be moved to a care home where a succession of carers will be shunted between primary non-intimate sources and being secondary sources. The lesser victim narcissist in advanced age will struggle to find a replacement intimate partner primary source if he or she has been lost. This is because the lesser victim narcissist relies on solely his need to be mothered and looked after as his selling point. His own parents will be dead and therefore they cannot be promoted to primary source and he will lack the mobility and cognitive function to seduce a new intimate partner primary source. He can do this when younger, when his conditions are not as extensive and he finds that especially caring individual. But when he is much older, he does not have this option. He has neither charm, money or intellect to draw a younger appliance to him. And therefore, the lesser victim narcissist runs the risk of losing the long-standing primary source through his rants and tantrums. He will find himself trying to rely on family members, possibly brothers, sisters or children, as secondary sources, but none will be willing to adopt the mantle of primary source, as they will have their own lives to lead. And unless the lesser victim narcissist can sustain fuel from these secondary sources, along with professional carers, also as secondary sources, he faces a diminution in fuel which will add a further weakness to the physical and mental ones which have already amassed. Decrepitude is inevitable. The aged less of a victim narcissist becomes even more unappealing with age. Furious at his limitations, unable to control that fury, but weakened from fuel losses, he, his is an unpleasant dotage. He will lash out at those who care for him, running the risk of isolating them and becoming the author of his own misfortune, as he is visited less and less by a reducing pool of friends and family. 
if able to secure professional care, he will be regarded as a cantankerous and unpleasant charge for those caring for him, who only do so out of a sense of professional obligation. And therefore, the fuel provided by these professional caregivers will be limited. He will invariably lack mobility, and even access to technology is unlikely to assist through reduced cognitive function, diminished hearing and eyesight. He will also have led a life which has been poor in terms of health and hygiene. He may well have issues with drink, and will turn to this in particular as he slowly drinks himself to death, using it as a crutch against the cruelty of the world, leaving him in this manner. He will sink into a routine of demanding his fix of drink or tobacco, caring not for the deleterious impact it will have, but rather needing the short-term boost. It provides him with oblivious to the downward spiral that he has embarked on. A combination of poor lifestyle choices, pre-existing health problems and the potential loss of a primary source caregiver, with other sources remaining away owing to the unpleasant nastery and malodorous nature of the lesser victim narcissist, means that they are more likely to face death in their 50s and 60s. The lesser victim narcissist, unable to control his beast, will frighten away those but the most hardy. And thus, he runs a considerable risk of descending into decrepitude, alone, furious and unloved, at his already shortened days come to an ignominious end. The mid-range victim. The mid-range victim narcissist follows a similar path to that of the lesser victim narcissist. Age will not be kind to him, increasing his discomfort, exacerbating his pain, and making him rail against the unfairness of his situation. Whereas the lesser victim becomes the architect of his isolation by his inability to keep his fury under control at those around him, the mid-range victim has an increased cognitive function, which he or she will put to better use. The mid-range victim narcissist will retain some degree of charm, although nowhere near the standard of the greater, but he will be able to amuse and draw people to him, politely seeking their assistance with lowering him into the bath or rubbing lotions into his aching limbs. He does not like this reliance, but has enough awareness to realise that he needs the assistance of others and he also has sufficient control over his fury to avoid lashing out in a fit of temper against those he needs to care for him. The mid-range victim narcissist stands a better chance of holding on to his primary source and also recognises that this person not only cares for him and thus provides fuel, but will provide a host of residual benefits and accordingly his machinations will mellow as he ages. He has enough acumen to recognise that having someone cook, clean and care for him as he ages is a useful trade-off for sticking with the same person. The likelihood of infidelity will diminish considerably from an already low point, since victim narcissists have little interest in sex, but rather use their general incompetence or impotence in that arena to garner the sympathy that fuels them. They have no need to be applauded for being a sexual Olympian when they can roll out a pity play for the inability to perform and blame it on some long-standing imagined fear. As the mid-range victim narcissist ages, there will be a lessening of the drama that once existed, and with decreased energy levels, he can no longer sustain the playing off of people against one another, and instead focuses on just receiving their emotional attention and being cared for. He will use his moderate degree of charm to ask people to come and see him, pretending to take an interest in what the grandchildren are doing, or how his favourite nephew is getting on with his new job. He will place a sprinkling of sugar, in order to get those secondary sources to pay heed to him. The mid-range victim narcissist will make particular use of familial secondary sources during his dotage, and indeed the primary source can witness a lessening of their burden as a reward for sticking with the mid-range victim narcissist. If these mild charm offences do not work, however, what you will notice is that what fury is ignited will manifest as emotional blackmail and sulking, as the mid-range victim narcissist 
coerces secondary sources into caring for him and visiting to provide fuel. You will hear such things as, I am your father, not that it seems to matter to you, you haven't visited me in two weeks. I will just sit here on my own, shall I, while you gad about, you selfish so-and-so. Old Bill over there gets plenty of visitors, so I'm left wondering where mine are. The family and friends of the mid-range victim narcissist can expect such spiky comments to be made in telephone calls and messages for the purposes of emotionally blackmailing those sources into providing fuel. The mid-range victim narcissist will ensure he is well cared for with a motivated primary source and plenty of secondary sources galvanised through the carrot of mal charm or the stick of emotional blackmail. He is unlikely to struggle for fuel and recognises the considerable advantages of keeping on side the primary and secondary sources for the residual benefits. He is not as short-sighted, either literally or figuratively, as the lesser victim narcissist. For the most part, his demeanour will improve, save for occasional sulks and silent treatments. But these will not be as prolific as when he was younger. His old age will be comfortable for him, as he is content to settle into the routine of being cared for and given a reasonable level of fuel, able to recognise his limitations and control his fury for the most part. Those around him will find the occasional period of self-centred sulking and demands for assistance, but will most likely find him to be less arduous than he was when he was younger. The mid-range victim narcissist will have taken a reasonably sensible course through life and notwithstanding his ailments and physical shortcomings, he will have sufficient charm and economic power to ensure that the autumn of his life is relatively comfortably seen out, if restricted. He will confine himself to his tower and expect others to attend on him. The greater victim. This combination of cadre and school does not exist.